Hello and welcome to the Sunbird Crochet Podcast. My name is Claudia and I'm coming to you from Germany. Today is Saturday, the 22nd or something of March. <laughs> and I'm here to talk to you about my crochet projects. And right now I don't have any knitting projects, but you can also see me knitting here occasionally, as well as painting, drawing, playing music, sewing a little bit lately, lately, not lately. <laughs> and um, just getting sidetracked all the time. I hope that you are having your own project in your hands and a drink in reach and that we are going to have a lovely time here together. Today I have for you a finished crochet project and I'm going to give you an update on my current other crochet projects as well as my new hobby. A little bit of incoming things, although one is rather a big one and also what's on the radar. So we're going to chat a little bit. So let's start with my finished project. So last time I was talking about having an idea, I believe, that the two crochet granny stitch shawls, which I wanted to make, I had used the pattern by Anna Boo's house and I worked up the second one to the size of the first and then I crocheted the two to of them together um, and now I have a huge blanket, a square one. It worked out perfectly. I've added the last joining last night while I was chatting with Mariette on Google Meet, I believe it was. Um, it was lovely but I'm going to talk about that in a moment. So my wonderful beautiful granny blanket or my two shawls have been turned into a blanket i've joined those here along in a brown color and then i've made a tiny little border in the same color here and it's very difficult to show to you because it's so huge i can try but uh, that's why I've posted quite a lot of it in the intro video just now. So <laughs> this is the joining from the one side. You can hardly see it, but on the other side you have a little brown ridge, which I, I'm actually fine with that. I've made two single crochets, chain one, two single crochets, chain one, 
if I, and I've crocheted into the sides of the stitches of each of the triangular shawls. So let me show you how it looks like. Very difficult to show, as I said. Um, the squares are not equal. I mean, the color changes, which make up the square look in the middle. They are not the same size, but sometimes they meet, like up here. So I think I'm liking it. And it's rather a wonderful, squishy, huge blanket in which I can lie under and enjoy the colors. I can't even say which side I prefer. If I prefer that bluish turquoise one or if I rather like the other side. It's just a beauty. I am loving it. So this is my the squishiest, wonderful, colorful granny stitch blanket. And it's much more fun like this because I had now three finished project experiences out of this. One for the first triangular shawl, one for the other side, and one for joining the two together to be a beautiful blanket. And I'm going to lie under it later. So let me just throw it over there on my sofa. And I'm just happy. So that's my finished object. Now, let me show you my current unfinished projects. So, on the hook. There are three unfinished projects on my radar. I'm sure I've got more, um, but two of those are in project bags right here and one is in hibernation. The one in hibernation is the heritage blanket, pattern by Yaline. And the other one is, or the other two, let me show you. First, I'm making, I've added a tiny bit of progress to my virus shawl. I'm using a cotton yarn cake is far more vibrant in color than you can see here on the camera. I'm using a 3.5 millimeter hook and this is my progress so far. The color changes are very subtle so you can't really see it maybe if if you are maybe like this it's getting lighter at the moment. So the darkest part is up here and now we are getting into the lighter areas. I haven't added much, as I said, just a tiny little bit to feel that I'm making progress with that. The virus shawl is a very popular shawl. I don't know who was the original designer, but there are many patterns out there now and I've made or I am making my virus straw from a free pattern on Ravelry, which is called Sultan Deluxe Virus Shawl. And it's, um, oh, I'm unraveling at the moment. <clears throat> it's, it's a beautiful pattern. There, secured. I might have to add a little bit more yet. I think I've lost one or two stitches. However, um, yeah, so that's one work in progress currently on my hooks. And it's living in my very cute bag. I've got this bag from Lukas Quilt Art, a German seller on Etsy. I've got quite a few of her bags, even though basically bags are just like yarn. At some point you have to admit that you're collecting them. 
<laughs> without really needing them. <clears throat> That's one project on my hook. And the other one <clears throat> yes you guessed it it's still my take two shawl i'm using yarn from different indie dyers this one here is sweet child of mine from punk rock unicorn yarns it was a special dye so one of a kind Basically, I've bought two skeins of this yarn and this is already the second, I believe. <clears throat> yeah, this is the, what's left from my second skein of yarn. And I am... <clears throat> I haven't worked on this one, so it's still the same like last time. Don't let me bore you with it. You've seen it before. It's a beautiful shawl with different textures and colors and designs. And the designer is Mariana Müller from South Africa. So these are my <clears throat> current projects. Apart from another granny shawl, of course. But Talking about South Africa, something is on my mind this weekend and I'm just going to move into the chat section now because um, it's on my mind right now, right? If you are currently in Cape Town in South Africa, you should go over, drive to Fishhook and there in one of the schools, I don't think you can miss it, is a wool festival, the Cape Town Wool Festival. And Yalin from Made by Yalin is there amongst other wonderful ladies. And I wish I would be there today. I think it's going to be so much fun. Yalin is currently posting some snippets and videos and whatever she's experiencing on that yarn festival so maybe follow her follow her on youtube and on instagram and you get getting some glimpses into south african wool festivals i think that's lovely talking about wool festivals there has been the east anglia yarn festival not ya ya yarn festival the east anglia yarn festival i saw it on uh, martin knit 365 blog I saw Ellie, who is starry as Ellie. They all went there, other podcasters as well. They had a podcasting meetup organized by Martin and that looked like a lot of fun. And I was like, uh, jealous is not the right word. It's I was having a secondhand wonderful experience of meeting up with these wonderful people. I just wish I could have been there myself in person. So maybe another year, another time. Also on my radar is that La Lila Land has published a new Amigurumi project pattern. And I believe you can buy the kit from her. She's based in Germany as well. If you don't know what I'm talking about, she's the designer of this beautiful barn owl, which was... Uh, here with a mouse which you can pull and then it's the Harry Potter Hedwig theme and I bought this as a kit and made it over Christmas I believe and that was lots of fun all the little details she gives you everything you need to make this owl but her new pattern is actually a cat chasing a ball of yarn and also the ball of yarn is on a pull string and you pull it and then the cat is like running after the ball you know these these uh, it's not music it's just like um another one of these childhood memory toys and it looks so cute i highly i, I very much enjoyed this project so i think i can 
recommend her new pattern as well, even though I haven't made it myself yet. So that's on my radar. And then I received I received the new issue of Murid magazine. This is the spring and summer 2024 edition. And I've had already a look inside, obviously. Um, the designers in here are Alicia Arroyo Blanco and Emily Uda and Heather C. Gibbs and Jess Bennett and Jessica Kocharen. I'm probably butchering your names. Joanne Fowler used to be the crochet project. She's She has a design in here as well. Julia Medill, Kaja Pinter, Kimberly Bate, Madison Hughes, Maria Jetschmick, and Marta Mitchell. Congratulations, Marta. Also contributors in here are Kat Golden. She was, or she used to be part of a crochet project as well and she's now living on a farm in Scotland running her own business together with her husband it's uh, I'm following her on Instagram it's lots of fun she has uh, goats and pigs and she is creating she's having people around to look around her farm and she's making sourdough bread she's giving courses on on those on make bread making and uh, I believe she also makes pizza for like spe on special days and it's just very interesting to follow her and it's a very different life from mine I highly recommend following her and she lately talked about yarn which comes from sheep which are hers and her neighbors and it's just wonderful to watch. My all-time favorite is Loretta the pig drinking the goat's or was it? No, the cow's milk with her bottom lip like really. <laughs> you have to watch it. Back to Murid. I can't show you what's all in here in detail. So let me see. There's there's a recipe for salted chocolate cookie bars from or by Cat Golden. I just talked about her and it looks delicious. And then this is Marta's design. A beautiful modern sweater or jumper. And There's another photo, it's called Counterbalance. I also liked the look of this dress. It reminded me of, uh, of a knitting pattern by Stephen West, the Vertices Unite. It's basically the same, so you are creating areas in crochet and then you're joining as you go when you're creating the next piece or panel and you join them together to make a garment and the vertices unite is knitting shawl so you are creating a shawl by adding different panels to each other as you go but this is crochet and i think it's really beautiful it's called metamorphose and it's by Keja Penta or Pinta, I think Penta. That's something I would really like to make. I just wonder how I will look like in a crochet dress. There's an interesting article about slow fashion, fast crafting, question mark by Sophie Hemmings. Uh, <clears throat> and this one is also a favorite. It's a wonderful, beautiful top. I'm very tempted to make this one. There's a close up of that top. And yeah, you might 
think that there is nothing you would like to make in it. But when you leave through it again and again and again, and the more you look at these designs, the more it gets into your head and how you would make these, which colors would you choose. Yeah, I'm still a fan of World Magazine. Excuse me, I just had a coughing fit. So, what else to talk about? I've been to my local craft market and I've bought two ornaments. Um, one is a felted little butterfly person with a wooden bead as a, at the head. I'm going to insert a photo here. And <clears throat> and the other one is a little glass bottle with a felted flower inside. And on the flower is a tiny, tiny little wooden ladybug. <clears throat> so these are two ornaments which are hanging there on my spring twigs in the vase. Also, <clears throat> on that same craft market, I got this little tiny fella. He has a chocolate egg here in his front pocket. And he's rather cute. I didn't make it myself, but I wanted to support the maker because um, there actually had been quite a lot of crocheters on that market. One had a very interesting stall with lots of crochet plants like succulents made in crochet. Something which looked like a cactus, but it was basically a tube, a crocheted tube out of green cotton yarn and inside must have been a wire, a thick wire, and they bent it so that it had the shape of a cactus and it was stuck at the base to a piece of wood. It looked really nice, I must say. This one was made by an older lady or she sold it. I don't know if she made it as well. I think the head is a little bit floppy, but maybe I'm going to add a few stitches. But that said, maybe also not. <laughs> it looks to me like um, arms and legs are the same shape when you have a tubular body and the head and the two ears are basically the same shape and um, the they are here connected with a few stitches so that you get a triangular shape so that he keeps sitting up, which is quite nifty, I think. And his trousers are actually knitted, except for these here. They are crossed on his back. And yeah, maybe I would choose to make a pom-pom as his tail. But it is quite a nice little present. I have someone in mind. And you could always put something else in his front pocket. But in this case, the Easter Bunny is carrying a chocolate egg. So that's a bye. <clears throat> And that's almost, almost everything. I just wanted to mention that I really enjoyed myself last night. Mariette is another podcaster. She's in South Africa and she posted kind of last minute that she was going to have a live chat and whoever wanted to join, she would send them the meeting details and uh, I... It happened that I had time last night, so uh, we had a lovely chat and it was just the two of us and we laughed a lot and it was so much fun. Thank you, Mariette, for last night. That was really 
lots and lots of fun and uh, we were talking about projects and we were also talking about hobbies and things which we start and never end and finish and she talked about a wonderful project from the sounds of it um, a blanket with some embroidery on it like panels the same motive and you have to embroider each panel and uh, she has it in her drawer and hasn't finished it yet so that's that's one thing which she intends to pick up again after she finishes her Battenberg blanket the Battenberg blanket was another topic we talked about sorry I'm sidetracked because it's starting to snow outside or is it hail it's hail crazy weather well focus and uh, yeah things we start and never finish uh, I talked to you about my button accordion also called a melodeon and I was given one which turns out to work only like not not that well it has some issues especially that there's a button on the side which you have to push if you want to open it quickly to get some air so to say it's like breathing in for the instrument or breathing out depending if you're pulling or pushing and that button would release a valve I mean just I'm just talking from how I understand it and that button is broken on the one which I've uh, which I received from my relatives so it's a quite a schlep uh, it's not so much fun if you play on an instrument which doesn't work properly and it's also quite heavy I must say and it's in CF Well, and the case is in plastic. Yes, it was a present, so you don't complain about a present. And I'm, I'm not complaining at all. But if you start looking into a certain type of um, instrument or craft, you get far more motivation if you're using the proper tools and the proper instruments working properly. So I had a look on second in the internet on kind of a kind of eBay site here in Germany. And as it happens, there was a guy from the Black Forest area who wanted to sell his melodeon because he bought himself uh, well he wanted to sell a two row melodeon because he just bought himself a newer one with three rows and basically i now paid half of half the price of what it would have cost me if i would have bought it second hand in a shop and it was a risk i he might have been an imposter and he might not have sent me the instrument after i paid it and it might not have worked it might have been broken there were lots of ifs and could have been and I took the risk and it worked out fine. So let me show you my new button accordion after all this kerfuffle. The shoulder thing thingies are new. They are very well um, padded. So that's good. And this is my and this is my Hona Morgan. Morgan after the, the magical lady from the King Arthur stories and it's made out of wood there is a metal grid and the buttons they are all working they are mother of pearl buttons and this the first row of bass is directly on here and then the second row is a little bit higher so that I don't have to grab around the first row that's much easier to handle it's very light because it's made out of wood 
and it has a lovely sound. with this beautiful, beautiful instrument. It has nothing to do with any craft, with yarn related things, but I'm taking you along on my musical journey as well. This, by the way, is the button I was talking about. It has also a button. So if you press that down, you are able to move it freely without breaking anything inside. And it's just a beautiful thing. And now I can, oh, this is a, a DG melodeon, which means that my one row is in the C um, melody and the other one is in the, no, it's in the D, G, the D and the G. So I can play different I can, how to say it, um, <clears throat> if you want to play with other people, um, you have to make sure that you are in the same melody region, in the same note region, the voice has to be the same, so my sister has a CF, the one I got given as free instrument is a CF as well, so we can play together with these instruments. This one is a DG, so if I want to play with someone else, he or she has to play in the same range, like a D or a G, or both. And this is how this is what how I understand it. And now my mission is, or my aim is, to learn how to play this properly and beautifully. I hope, fingers crossed. And the Morgan, the Hona Morgan is um, the DG melody or voice is made for Gaelic songs and Balfog, which is the French and Brittany and the French melodeon scene. And I started following lots of melodeon YouTube channels. I never knew I wanted to <laughs> until I had this instrument. And if you are interested in these things, then I can I can share that with you if you want, but I think I will leave it to that right now because I don't want to bore you. Um, yeah. I'm crazy. <laughs> but uh, so much about hobbies and passions and things and trying out new things. This melodeon or button accordion has a lot less tremolo than the other one. So I can make a, I can get a much clearer sound out of this, this one here. And I really love that sound. You know what? I'm going to link down below to my current favorite song played on a melodeon by an English tutor, and I hope that you will like it. It's a Scottish song, it's called Dark Isle. And with that, I'm going to leave you for today. I hope you're enjoying your weekend. I'm expecting visitors, my family, my some relatives are coming to visit. And we're going to have a lovely meal with some cake afterwards. So. Have fun, enjoy your free time, start a new hobby, <laughs> finish a project, start new ones, whatever makes you happy. And I'm going to see you soon again. Bye. Chat soon. <laughs>